Well, thank you, and thank you, uh, Jose, for inviting me to participate today. It's my pleasure to speak to you all, and including online. Um, first, let me uh, recontextualize the issue the way that I'm trying to look at it. Um, the Green Energy Act is uh, a bill of the Ontario Parliament. Uh, that Parliament is no more for all practical purposes, and we'll see what Parliament is reconstituted. All of the bills that were before the legislature are no more, including Bill 75, which was to rationalize planning, uh, market operations, uh, forecasting, and conservation policy and programming. And so that is no more. So, um, and we won't know what's next for six months, maybe. Um, I would say at a minimum, because I doubt whether the candidates in the next election will double down on energy the way that the Premier did in the last election. It is his file. It has forced him out of office, in a way, or given him at least a plausible opportunity to vacate his office. Um, but we've been thinking, uh, and by we I mean um, the large industrial, custom, large industrial and commercial customers who are my clients, um, we necessarily think long term because we have long term investments. You know, there's a lot of uh, people that have invested their money with our companies in assets, long lived assets, some of the longest lived energy producing assets in Ontario are on the side of and were built in and continue to be owned and operated by industrials before, you know, or at the same vintage as Ontario Hydro's oldest facilities. So we're thinking long term and we're looking to Ontario and we're saying, you know, the big, you know, there's two functions of an energy manager in industry or, or in business. Uh, one is budgeting, the other is forecasting. And so we help, we develop an outlook for the market. And when, uh, in terms of forecasting, they're asked for their view of what the forward price of delivered power is going to be in Ontario as a basis for making investment decisions. Is the asset that we're investing going to be viable or not? Um, and the reality, unfortunately, is that Ontario now has the highest posted prices in Canada and the United States for industry uh, and a rate of escalation that is higher, two to three times higher than almost uh, every other jurisdiction. Um, and for a lot of reasons, we don't, you know, we've hedged, uh, but we've hedged in ways as demand shrinks that are causing our costs to rise fairly dramatically. So there's a lot of very difficult questions that need to be asked in Ontario. Part of which is the future of renewable energy, the other part is the future of nuclear power. Um, the variable in the equation is the future of demand, and that's where I'm focusing most of my professional efforts because I think we can manage demand down in a way that builds our economy and makes us less dependent on technology to meet our energy requirements in our society. And that's a long-term sustainable view that I've formed over time. The other interesting context is that Ontario isn't an island in and of itself, despite the Canada Act, uh, which I feel is deeply flawed, um, because we cannot solve our problems within the provincial boundaries. Uh, if we are to uh, continue to grow Toronto as a world city and its environs and to continue in many ways to be the financial heart of this country, we need uh, to be able to avail ourselves of the resources of the country. And by that I mean the renewable resources that exist in northern Manitoba, northern Ontario, northern Quebec, and in Labrador, uh, which we currently cannot have access to at decent uh, prices or competitive prices, or prices that do us no good, let's put it that way. Um, the other thing is, you know, we really do have to manage infrastructure in the region to provide uh, uh, for the needs of the economy, the Canadian economy, which frankly is centered on Toronto and its environs with an outpost in Calgary and another outpost on the West Coast. So, you know, it, we, we're at a time where we can um, ask ourselves about what our energy future looks like uh, in a way that's uh, liberated from the political discussions. The Premier's a lame duck. All of the uh, candidates to replace him will be very careful on the file and will seek to distance themselves, I think, from the dead ducks that uh, McKinty leaves behind. Uh, the opposition, I think, will also uh, be uh, cautious because, you know, shifting sands. Um, you know, there's some basic rules uh, that dictate our future. Uh, one is the geography of the province. The other is the seasonality. Um, there are some basic facts about how many people there are, how we live, the infrastructure that we live within. Um, and then there are a lot of conditions about, you know, how do we want to live and how do we, what kind of social and cultural uh, uh, aspects of our of the way we live do we want to think about so that we can manage our future sustainably thank you very much